Hi, I'm Jeff Essel. So there's some big changes coming to Semantic Text in Elastic. For those of you who haven't used it, Semantic Text is Elasticsearch's real easy way to get started using um, Semantic Search in Elastic. We tie it to an inference API, which will automatically then tie it to an embedding model so you can generate embeddings. It does chunking for you, makes querying really easy. Now this has been out for a little while, but it's been in beta. So in 8.18, which is coming out very soon when I'm recording this, um, it's going to be GA. So as part of that GA, there are some functional changes. And I wanted to release this before the GA just because I've seen some people start to play with it. And um, I wanted to let people know the changes. Now, this is available in serverless today as of the day I'm recording it. So if 8.18 isn't out yet, when you're watching this, you can go over to cloud.elastic.co and sign up for a trial and you'll get into serverless and you can try it out. So to demonstrate the changes, it's going to be real quick. There's a great blog coming out next week that goes into a lot more depth and detail on this. We'll have documentation and all that stuff. But I just wanted to go through this quick. So first thing I'm going to do is create a mapping. So one of the new functionalities that is supported with uh, semantic text in, in it's now going to be GA in 818, is the ability to have it as part of a multi-field. So this way, you don't have to have a separate field for your text representation for lexical search and a separate field you know, for your um, semantic text and, and do a lot of duplication and, and complexity. You can have, in this case, I have a field called text that's base type of text, but then I have a multi-field. So it'll be text.semantic that's a semantic text. One thing to point out here, um, by default, also, if you don't specify an inference ID, we are going to use the default um, Elastic, the Elser inference API that's already set up for you. Um, so this is going to be automatically generating tokens and weights using the, the Elser, the Elastic Learn Sparse Encoder Embedding Model. So you don't have to specify it there, but if you want to use E5 or some other service, you certainly can specify the inference ID there. So we have our mapping set up. Now, to demonstrate this, I have just a, a big text document. It's not really relevant or important what it is. One thing I point out to note is I'm only indexing to the text field. I don't have to have one to text and one to a separate semantic text. I don't have to use copy to or some of the other tricks that we were doing when it was still in beta. Because of the way multi-field type works, you just index it into the top level field and then whatever the field types below propagate through. So what this did with just this real quick command was it indexed the text so we can do lexical text search. But it also then for the semantic text portion, it did chunking and it generated uh, ELSER tokens and weights for the ability to do semantic search. So if you happen to have used semantic text before, one thing I really want to point out, and this is actually one of the reasons I put this out a little early, is you used to be able to go and you would see that in source, you would see the tokens and the individual chunks. So no longer are you going to see those in there. This way, we're not duplicating a lot of text around, and we're just making it simpler to use. Kind of think of it like when you index a regular text document, there's actually tokenization that goes on behind this, you know, as part of indexing, but you don't see those individual tokens. You just see the text version. So just know that if it's set up, the chunking and embeddings did happen. You just aren't going to see them. But that's fine. So now let's take a look at a couple of queries. So to do a semantic query here, there's a lot of you know, different ways you can do a semantic query, but I'm just going to do a basic you know, query with semantic. Now, again, I'm going to do text.semantic because I'm targeting my semantic portion of the text. And I'll ask a question that matches my one document. There's only one document, so hopefully it did actually match like we have here. Um, but you'll see I get back my whole document, which is great. Now, um, Previously, there were different ways you could try to get back just a chunk of text, for example, using inner hits, which is was never actually supported. So don't do it. Just pretend I didn't talk about it. Um, what we're supporting in as part of the GA is highlight. So the highlight function, uh, I'll show it in a second. This is what we've been doing for lexical search for a long time. It returns a portion of text that matches or is relevant to, to what you know, your query hit on. So if I run this here, You'll see, and I have source turned off because I don't want everything. I just get back the chunk of text in this case that was semantically similar to my query, how do users easily use Elastic? Um, so you can do this. This allows you to, and you can get top two, top three, whatever. You can do different ordering. Um, so I'm ordering by the, the top chunk again that semantically was relevant. Um, now, you can still, of course, do lexical search with my just 
text. Here I'm just targeting the text version, the, the kind of base version of the, the field, if you will. And you'll see, again, this we've been doing this for a long time, I can do highlighting. But you'll notice that the highlight syntax is exactly the same for lexical as it is for semantics. So it makes it real easy. You don't have to do a real convoluted inner hits and all this nested stuff. You simply use highlight and you get back the, the relevant portion of text. Um, two other things we want to cover real quick and I'll almost wrap it up is um, Match has a new trick. Now there's a great blog that just came out. It's in uh, Search Lab. So if you go to this, so for a long time, I mean, Match is not a new query by any means. It's been around for forever, but you can now target a semantic text field and Match will automatically know how to perform a semantic query. So we're doing the same thing where we're generating embeddings for this and then we're semantically matching relevant documents and returning them but i can just do match and then again i can highlight now again to show you it's the exact same syntax if i switch this to the text version of the field i'm going to get i'm going to going to perform a lexical search in this case so really nice you can use match for either or um, if you look in this blog there's even a really cool example where you have two different indices and they have the same field name but one's a text and one semantic if you do uh, a pattern that matches both indices, you can use just the match query. And in the index, it's text. It does text. The index, it's semantic. It is semantic. Super cool. Really great stuff for engineering. And last thing I'll leave you with is you can do a uh, Elastic's new ES pipe QL language. Um, so I'm doing pretty much similar things. So I'm doing, you know, I'm targeting semantic uh, text index here, and I'm doing uh, a where and then colon, how to use the semantic. And this is performing a semantic uh, uh, text search for me. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, when the new blog comes out, I'll link it in the description below. But uh, definitely check out uh, Elastic if you have any questions. And again, you can go to cloud.elastic.co, sign up for a trial, and you can do all this in serverless today. So I uh, hope that was helpful. Bye.